Coming up on Podcast 1549, General Motors could re-enter the European market, bringing the Lyric as the first car over here on sale. Stick around, I'll tell you more. Also on the show today, electric school buses helping the grid China versus Europe, who's winning the EV wars, and BMW make batteries in place of where they were making the i3. Those stories and a lot more coming up on EV News Daily. My name is Martin Lee, and it's my job to go through every EV story, so you don't have to. We'll start with news about the San Diego electric school bus trial uh, with San Diego Gas and Electric, SDG&E, alongside the school district and also so Nuve, now they're a company that specialise in vehicle-to-grid stuff. I've had them on the podcast before a couple of years ago. It's time to get them back on. Eight school buses, six DC fast chargers that are bidirectional at their bus yard in the city of El Cajon. Uh, these vehicles are parked and they uh, often during the day aren't doing anything because you know exactly when kids are going to be going to school and going home again. You know the routes the buses are going to do, you know the weather, the terrain, you can pretty much pinpoint exactly how much energy is going to be needed for that school run. And when they're not on the road, they can support the grid and that can make schools money. Because when the grid is in emergency state, a bit like the emergency load reduction program they have at SDG&E, they pay businesses $2 per kilowatt hour, which is huge, to support the grid to either export power or reduce their usage uh, when there's a grid emergency going on. So I'll pop a link to Clean Technica in the show notes if you want to read more about this story. It, it makes sense, so much sense for all school buses to be electric couple of reasons. Firstly, there's a bunch of evidence about fumes that enter vehicles that you are driving in because, you know, you're driving down the road, you see a stinky diesel spouting loads of black fumes and you think, well, it's leaving the vehicle behind it. But actually, so much of those pollutants are re-entering the vehicle that it comes from. So we're killing our kids, firstly, intentionally. And secondly, the great thing about electric school buses is you know exactly when they're working, when they're not. And when they're not, they can discharge to the grid when the grid needs it. And then you know what you're going to need for next day's school run. So overnight, when the grid is not used, it's greener and cheaper. You can recharge those trucks. Schools can make money out of their school buses. They could even be self-funding. I don't know. But they've got to get more electric school buses on the road. It's a brilliant idea. Now, next, let's talk about the battle of China versus Europe. A couple of years ago, it was pretty much head-to-head. -head. Then Europe became bigger than China in terms of EV sales. And now it's no contact uh, test because China has once again leapt into the lead in the first half of this year. First half of 2022, China is at 59% of the world's EV sales. 4.24 million new energy vehicles, which is the phrase they call them, uh, includes hydrogen as well, but they haven't sold any of those. Uh, and uh, Europe is a much, much lower percentage now. Uh, China up from 41% two years ago and 52% last year, now 59%. How are they doing it? Well, lots of domestic EV makers, lots of domestic demand, and crucially, lots of domestic supply. Tesla Shanghai, big export hub, getting loads of attention, but so many of those big Chinese EV makers, even the ones that are coming to Europe, the Neos and BYDs and Li Autos and Xpungs and more, big, big domestic supply and big domestic demand as well, where higher oil price prices are driving up. Uh, petrol prices in China, electricity prices still staying, staying relatively unchanged and quite low in comparison and still very strong orders for EVs. And so China just head and shoulders above everybody else now in terms of EVs. I'll pop a link to see an EV post in the show notes if you'd like to read more. Well, the BMW i3, may it rest in peace. Last month, it finally came to the end of a magnificent run. I love the BMW i3 in all of its various guises. And the plant where it was made in Leipzig is now making batteries for other EVs. The second production line for the battery models is now starting uh, series production, and those batteries will go into the all-electric BMW i4. Now, the i4 isn't made there. It's made in Munich. The first production line of making batteries opened uh, just uh, over a year ago in 2021, May 21. It opened supplying batteries for the BMW iX. The second assembly line 
is now open and it was built where the i3 was made after a short closure and some investment to change over. According to Electrive.com, after model assembly for the iX and i4, the Leipzig plant will also produce modules for the next generation Mini Countryman, which will roll off the production line PureBev next year. Uh, not to mention the iX. X1, uh, so we don't know where the batteries will come from for that. Now, let's talk Tesla. One of the reasons why Tesla is head and shoulders above everybody else when it comes to software, and that is the Tesla hacker, Green the Only, who, that's his name on Twitter, uh, is a him. I say him. I'm not assuming that all hackers are him, but I think in the past we've uh, he's talked about or put videos online uh, with his identity, uh, in case you're wondering. Um, he says, wow! The latest version of Tesla software, 2022.20.7, uh, seems to go to insane details to improve range predictions. Even tyre pressure is taken into account amongst many, many other extra variables just added. Also takes into account energy loss to phone charging and 12-volt accessories, air density and battery heat and cool. That's insane that Tesla's even working out how much you charge in your mobile phone. And all these things might be very, very small Air tire pressures, very, very small, 12 volt accessories, etc. But cumulatively, I imagine they make a difference. And the fact that Tesla are doing this regularly and pushing the envelope is why I will argue with anyone that Tesla has the best software in the EV industry. Do they have the best fit and finish? Do they have the best cars? Uh, depends what you want, really. Everyone's different, isn't it? Subjective. But do they have the best software? I think objectively, it's so good, and it's constantly being updated. Tesla's rolled out a number of improvements for their range predictions in May. They allowed Teslas to update their NAV feature by incorporating the crosswind, headwind, humidity, and ambient temperature data, according to Tesla Rati. And I'm sure the engineers are not stopping there either. It's just so good. It's just class leading in terms of the software, and it's uh, you know, it signifies how much distance there is for the others to catch up if you're going to get to this granular level of detail just for the range prediction. Do they always get it right? The redesign earlier this year, was it great? No, it stinks. Um, I think they listened. I think they listened as well. Uh, moving some of those climate and seat controls into two or three clicks to where you want to get to. That was a misstep, uh, but I think they fixed it, or they're fixing a lot of stuff anyway, and listening to the community and the drivers. I'm not a Tesla owner, um, but I try and drive one as often as possible. I think anyone that talks about electric vehicles needs to always be up to date on their Tesla knowledge because a lot changes very quickly, and you can get left behind very quickly as well. Now, uh, on the way very soon, stick around. We're going to be talking about uh, the new Audi A3 next, and the latest thing that EVs are being blamed for. Stick around. Those stories are on the way. Now, let's talk the A3, the Audi A3. Been around since, what, early 90s, mid 90s? Very, very important car for Audi. And when it goes electric, what can we expect? Well, it's not going to go electric anytime soon. There is a platform that the VW Group usually may know. It's the MEB platform, and that's what the ID3, ID4, Skoda Enyaq, Cooper Born, etc. are all on. They're not going to use that for the Audi A3. They're going to wait couple of years and use the new SSP architecture. That is going to give them the ability to make a much better car rather than bringing the Audi A3 to market right now. It'll either be rear or four-wheel drive. They won't go petrol, diesel, plug-in, pure electric for the A3 when it goes electric, by the way. Uh, they rejected the platform that's out there at the minute. They're going to wait because you go for this new platform, and then you're going to be able to make cars like an RS3 e-tron version. Uh, and that's going to have, you know, 3.8 seconds, not to 62 miles an hour. That's not to 100 k's, according to Autocar Magazine. So what can we expect from this new platform coming mid-decade? 800-volt architecture, unified cell. Uh, VW are moving away from the Korean to the Chinese manufacturers. Uh, so 270 kilowatt charging, really, really fast charging. 10-minute stop, plug-in and you're on your way. Again, the cars can be lower. It's got a lower profile in terms of the platform. And then all the other things that a dedicated platform can do to the A3. So you can shorten the overhangs, uh, you can increase the interior space, and it's definitely worth doing. Just a shame we've got to wait a little bit longer for that car. Now, what's the latest thing that EVs are getting blamed for? And, you know, 
EVs get blamed for a lot. Uh, this time they're being blamed for the death of AM radio. Uh, what with the likes of BMW uh, getting rid of AM, Tesla got rid of it in 2018. Uh, Porsche's Taycan doesn't have it, says this article, globalnews.ca reporting on this. Mercedes-Benz EQS, Volvo XC40 and C40. Nope, no AM radio. Interference from the electri electrical motors and components are a nightmare for AM radio. You know what is a nightmare? AM radio. So, um, am I qualified to talk on this? Yes, because I spent my previous career before making podcasts for you. Um, 25 years in terrestrial radio, running radio stations that broadcast on AM. And all of the conversations were around not going to FM, but just going straight to digital and streaming and, and moving at that. Okay, so if you're in the middle of a US state that's sparsely populated with not great internet when you're out and about and no satellite radio, then maybe I understand how a handful of people still use it. But come on, you can't blame EVs for the death of AM radio. Now, Toyota and Panasonic, their battery joint venture is going to buy lithium, a uh, an offtake agreement with a Nevada mine owned by Ion Air. Uh, they're going to take 4,000 tonnes of lithium carbonate annually for five years to their joint venture company. That could make around 150,000 EVs every year, according to Reuters.com. A lot of variables in that in terms of how big the batteries are, um, etc. But they'll produce 21,000 tonnes of lithium in Nevada annually from the middle of the decade. Now, what's GM doing? to stop people flipping cars the hummer is barely out you know they're making oh, about four of them a year um, at the minute but the ones that are out there are being sold lots of people want a hummer don't want to wait in line there's 70,000 people in the queue and so i've seen them for sale for twice what people bought them for from gm and so a letter obtained by corvette blogger uh, steve carlisle uh, uh, the gm president for north america told gm dealerships so this is a little bit chinese whispers here but i'm going with this report because i trust the source uh, very much at engadget apparently According to the story, Steve telling dealerships they'll limit the transferability of warranties. I guess that's all the GM have really got in their locker. They can't tell their dealerships what to do, but at least they're, by not transferring the warranty, are you going to buy a $200,000-plus EV Hummer and not get a warranty with it? So according to a Wall Street Journal report earlier this month, GM have been producing a dozen electric Hummers a day, but there's 70,000 in the queue and people are getting impatient. Now, if you want to get your kids on dirt bikes, KTM released three more, what they call sport mini cycles, all electric. These things like so much fun for kids. This is what I was doing when I was seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, maybe. I forget how old I was. I look at some old photos. Uh, my dad could remind me. Uh, he bought, he had me on dirt bikes when I was growing up. And it's great. You know, I don't know how he did it because I'm a dad myself now. And uh, although my little one's only a toddler, I can't imagine buying him a helmet and a bike. But either way, um, that makes me a hypocrite. I loved it. It was great. Um, teaches you a lot. You grow up pretty quickly. Um, only came off badly, I think, once, twice, maybe, actually. Uh, a couple of scars to prove it. But still, going electric is so good in these kind of fun leisure sport bikes as well. Now, headline story, General Motors could return to Europe with a range of EVs. GM is gearing up for a return to the European market with a range of EVs and the Cadillac Lyric coming first with the Ultium battery. They withdrew from Europe when they sold up at Opel and Vauxhall back in 2017. But GM's Europe boss, Mahmoud Samara, saying we're confident we'll be a substantial player in the market. GM is committed to having a fully electric lineup. 2035 is their deadline. Here in the UK, we'll go 2030 EU will be 2035, and so if GM want to sell as many EVs as possible, hey, come back to Europe, bring the Lyric, ASAP, stick the steering wheel on the proper side, and I'll have one. That's a great car. And I'll pop a link to Auto Car in the show notes so you can read a little bit more. Now, the Apple Car Project seems to still be going. Well, it must be. They've hired a 21-year veteran of Lamborghini, Luigi Taraborelli has left Lambo, according to his LinkedIn profile, after 21 years and has gone to Apple. Now, Apple have lost some good, good people, the likes of Doug Field, who went to Ford, which, you know, at the time gave me confidence in what Ford were doing, hiring good people, but bad for Apple to lose people of that 
uh, that level. And so Apple hiring now for a new head of their Project Titan, which could be the EV that we see one day or maybe never. Who knows? what Apple are working on, but very interesting. Right, that's your podcast for today. Uh, if you want to get the audio version of this show, make sure you do listen uh, in your ears, if you want, when you're out and about, when you're walking the dog, doing the workout, whatever you're doing, get me a podcast by searching Apple, Google, Spotify, any of the others for EV News Daily. You know you want to. Hit subscribe, and then you've got a choice. You can either watch the video when you're around, you've got a screen, or you can have it on your phone, download it every day, ready to go. Right, question of the week, taking a small break for now, but it will return. Thank you very much to all of our patrons online. You can support the show by going to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash EV News Daily. Thanks for watching the YouTube version of the show. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.